Hello everybody, this is the Veek Strand and one thing I'm really fond of is movies about agents and spying and you know counterintelligence and stuff like that. And when you have Chris Cooper doing maybe his greatest performance of all time, you think it's going to be an absolute runaway success. And it almost was, it almost was, but it wasn't quite. Now, I'm going to say this, this is a good movie. Don't get me wrong, because I'm going to dump a whole lot on this one, but it's still gonna come off with a pretty good rating, actually. But let's not get too far ahead, shall we? Let's talk about the movie of today, which is called Breach. So freshly baked FBI agent Eric O'Neill, played by Ryan Philippi, he is going to start his career in good old Washington DC. Everything good so far. And he gets to work with a true veteran of the Corps, Hansen, played by Chris Cooper. But uh, Laura Linney, uh, another FBI agent, tells him that they want him to keep an eye on uh, Hansen because he's uh, apparently a sexual deviant or something like that. And I've never f figured out why that was a thing. A, was it against the, the rules, whatever they thought he was going to do, or I don't know. Because the fact is that you didn't need to do that, because that was not what actually happened with the O'Neill Hansen story. And um, they just simply slap it on there for, you know, I guess padding the runtime. O'Neill figures out after a short while that. Uh, there is no sexual deviant thing going on here. Uh, Hansen's cast iron reputation of being a devoted Catholic rings true. And uh, he loves his wife and his family and he's, you know, a part of Opus Dei, which doesn't mean that he is, uh, uh, you know, trying to stop Robert Langner from discovering secrets of Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. However, he finds out that this was just a cover story. Uh, for him because they're not suspecting him of being a sexual deviant, they're suspecting him of being a, uh, a traitor. And he has been selling information to the Russians for years upon years, decades upon decades. And they want to use O'Neill to try to make the case against him airtight and waterproof. They have a lot of, you know, evidence against him, but they want to, you know, caught him in the act to have, to have the case wrapped up and ready to go. So O'Neill's job is basically, he's going to try to spy on, on a super spy and he's going to try to outsmart him and, you know, try to, you know, make sure that uh, he's caught in the act of, you know, leaving messages and stuff like that. And, uh, which is going to be a little tricky because he has, you know, not only has he a lot of respect for Hansen, also Hansen is, you know, this very smart guy. And they also have, you know, began to form a bond together because uh, Philippi is also a, uh, a Catholic, but he isn't really practicing that anymore. And uh, he's inspired by good old Hansen. So what's the Russians going to do? Is he in danger? Is his marriage in danger? Is he going to be able to outsmart this um, veteran spy and uh, is he going to be able to you know get the FBI what they want or will Hansen simply be able to slip away? Questions that will have answers. As I said in the beginning I really like spy movies. I like the fact that this movie has you know a very down-to-earth very you know authentic uh, unflashy uh, way of looking at espionage and stuff like that. That's good. However that doesn't mean that the movie has to be almost without suspenseful moments. There are suspenseful moments here, there, you know, ev eventually, but they aren't as effective as they could have been. I think using rather inexperienced uh, movie director Billy Ray is sort of to blame for this. Directors like Denis de Neville or uh, Ridley Scott or uh, Alfred Hitchcock has shown that you don't need big budgets and you don't need big moments to create tension. You can make looking for a tie in a garbage truck 
the most intense thing you've ever seen. You can make the most suspenseful thing out of a traffic jam. You don't need a lot to make a lot. You can make a lot with little and they don't do that. However, Chris Cooper's performance is absolutely stonking good. Chris Cooper is an underrated actor in my opinion. And whenever he puts on his working boots, magic happens. He is this super conservative guy, but he also has a softer side and very charming. And he, he feels so genuine all the time. So you're thinking, is that really a traitor? Is that really a guy who would sell, you know, information to the Russians? Why? Why is he doing this? And you, you're ending, ending up really sort of rooting for him. And his um, ideas about uh, the FBI and, uh, you know, and the, how disappointed he is at what the... the uh, organization has become makes us you know sympathize with him the same thing cannot be said for his counterpart O'Neill Ryan Philippi has always in my opinion be, been a pretty bad actor I've never seen him perform anything above okay I think this is not one of his better ones he has more personality than a coma patient but not a lot and he doesn't seem to care and I think that the entire thing with the marriage problems and the entire thing with, you know, stuff that doesn't belong here, you know, muddles the water for this movie. It feels unfocused. I don't care about his marriage. I cared more for, you know, Hansen's marriage. And I cared more for him than our protagonist. That's a big problem. Now, this movie has a very good ending and has a rather strong third act which pulls it up a little bit from the you know marshland of not entertainment that we were stuck in it's always good to finish a movie strong it is a fascinating movie and it has good parts in it i just wished it would have been you know slightly recasted and made by somebody else and you know focusing a little bit better then we could have talked about this as one of 2007's best movies i think this is pretty solid craftsmanship. I give this movie 66 points. I think it is a good spy movie. I think this could have been an even better spy movie than what we actually got. But I, I would still recommend this, if only for Chris Cooper's fantastic performance. So I'll see you next time from, well, so-and-so, reviewing, well, such-and-such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.